my name is Bharat, uh, Bharat Joshi. Uh, I am one of the co-founders of Unit Systems. Uh, I have around 22 plus years of experience in uh, uh, software industry now. And uh, uh, we just started uh, Unit uh, around six years back. Uh, as part of, uh, we were part of Infosys before that for almost 14, 15 years. And uh, the three of uh, us uh, came out of Infosys and started uh, Unet uh, with a vision of creating a globally loved software product company from India. So that has been the, uh, the vision which has been driving all of us at Unet uh, to make sure that we put India onto the world map uh, and to be known as as good as what is known for software services uh, should, should be known for software products as well. I have come from a very, very small town called Ramnagar, uh, which is uh, the place a lot of people know as uh, Jim Corbett National Park. That is a place I belong to. Very early on, uh, my, my parents, my father actually is a businessman and my mother is a housewife. Medium, uh, sort of thing uh, uh, because uh, uh, in, in my time town at the time there was no English medium schools right so I did my uh, uh, 10th and 12th uh, in from UP board right and, and then I joined a uh, engineering college called HBTI Harcourt Butler Technological Institute which is one of the oldest engineering college in India right? it is in Kanpur and then I came out of that and joined Reliance uh, Reliance Petroleum right which was in Jamnagar this is where I really understood the scale which people really talk about now and associate reliance with, right? Uh, Mr. Dhirubhai and Mr. Mukesh Ambani actually thought of creating a world largest grassroots level refining, right, uh, uh, in India, uh, which was really unheard of or which was somebody would not have really think that that's something like that is possible, right? So I, I come, I, I experienced that. I was part of building that refinery uh, as a very small uh, graduate engineer trainee there, uh, right? And uh, uh, from there, I I, uh, I worked there for two and a half years in a traditional industry and then jumped into Infosys uh, because uh, uh, I, I was very uh, fascinated by uh, the communication part of things, the internet part of things and, and the computer part of things, right? So I, I jumped in and luckily I got to work in, in something a very very interesting technology called data communication or networking right uh, the discussion which we are doing over uh, internet today uh, this whole thing is built on top of that data communication almost 14 years with a very fantastic set of people uh, somebody who is very very good technically quite a bit uh, uh, from Infosys right so if you see that the scale part actually what I've learned is uh, what I've understood or really got inspired is uh, was from Reliance. Uh, but when it comes to the the humbling part of it or, or uh, uh, the culture part of it, uh, the, the working with the team and collaboration part of it, that all that thing has come uh, from Infosys, right? right. And, and uh, uh, yeah. so in Infosys, we were basically part of the product R&D group. Uh, though Infosys is known as the, the software services giant, right? Uh, yeah. But uh, under the leadership of Mr. Nadan Nelikani, uh, we basically had started a product R&D group because at that time also uh, uh, we felt that uh, though whatever we are doing for other MNCs and so on, uh, why not create a software product for India, right? Uh, and, and that's when we started. And we did create a complete Make in India product uh, for data communication called uh, Indigenous Router Platform, right? And in fact, uh, that uh, got selected by Bharat Electronics for uh, using it in, in the Army and Navy and Air Force sort of network, right? right. Uh, uh, in 2014, we came out of Infosys and started Vunet again with the same vision of uh, creating a globally loved world-class software product from India, right? And 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 that's what we have been uh, working at uh, tirelessly with uh, with with all the uh, uh, great folks who have joined us in this journey. Yeah, so that that is what what I have been doing. Yeah, yeah. I actually interacted with their uh, uh, the the person who was in charge uh, okay. for Reliance Jamnagar plant. That was. Uh, HRM, we used to call him, that is Hital Ram Vishwani. Right. Uh, he is the cousin brother of uh, Mr. Mukesh Ambani. 
Right. and who was in charge of the reliance patrol so the work i was doing for reliance at the time i had to give him a presentation just imagine a one and a half years old experienced guy giving a presentation to some somebody who who, who basically was at that level right so right. it was fantastic experience yeah actually right. in 98 we we just started in 99 we just started having uh, hotmail.com uh, mail right. ids yeah Yeah. and uh, there was a site called 123india.com so there yeah. are only couple of them at that time in fact i had attended infosys uh, infosys had come to hbti at the time and i was one of the four guys who actually had cleared their written test uh, okay. though i could not clear their interview so they had actually taken couple of folks from uh, from hbti at the time right uh so uh, at the time infosys was really growing right uh, and they were looking for uh, engineers and 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 at the time they had come to a term uh, that uh, engineers from any uh, discipline right whether it is electronics or electrical or or so on uh, can be trained to become a good software engineer right, right. that is a that is a philosophy which uh, uh, i think infosys and uh, tcs and wipro had started uh, coming out right? right so it was becoming quite easy to to apply for it uh, in the starting but then there the way they were uh, uh, really uh, looking at hiring the, the process which they had they had a, a pretty decent uh, pretty interesting actually uh, a puzzle based uh, 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 this uh, written test sort of thing right, right. right and then because because just think it from their perspective right they didn't they could not assess you on the discipline you are in because it is like open for all right and uh, similarly their in- interview phase also was quite uh, interesting mm-hmm. so uh, uh, if, if you are a good logically thinking person right it was quite easy to uh, get through that uh, right so so what really happened is that uh, for me the way that it worked for me was that uh, we were in reliance for two to and a half years right and during this time this the refinery of uh, Uh, the construction the implementation was was happening uh, comes to almost a close and whenever a big plant get into steady state the amount of work which you have been doing before that reduces to like almost 10% right because they do not let you touch anything after that because things are in production right and then we started everybody started looking at options what to do next right and couple of my friends started going for mbas and so on and i was not very much interested on the management side of things uh because uh, i still was very very as- as attached or associated with the technical uh, sort of thing right so uh, somebody said that okay there is a infosys thing happening and i uh, issued a mail and then they said yeah please come and that's how how really thing happened so it was quite easy but yeah there the, the process they follow the, the thing they do in fact some of the processes we are following in unit as well i mean i i really uh, become Uh, you can call it enamored or uh, uh, really f- fascinating for me that how do you identify uh, a person who, who you are going to bring into your team right and uh, is able to take up the job which you are looking at and and i i still feel and i believe that logical reasoning right at thinking something logically is uh, is really at the top so i had a chat with a couple of folks right that uh, what really happened for a, a very very close friend of mine uh, he he felt that after doing the engine so uh, at at 10 plus 2 you usually have at the time two options right either you are going for engineering or you are going for medical uh, i mean if you really want to uh, if you are really a good student right somebody yes. who is really scoring uh, good marks in either biology or or maths right uh so a lot of people actually get into uh, engineering because these are the only two options which people felt or their parents associated that yes uh, if if my kid goes into engineering then it will become successful in life sort of thing right but after going through those four years of engineering and then one or two years of uh, work so so by the way the work which you do even after engineering has nothing to do with engineering most of the time right okay. so that is that is a very big gap between our Uh, way we teach uh, yeah. uh, our engineers and then the work we expect out of them uh, right. once they come out right so uh, my my one of my best friend actually 
uh, got uh, into this that i am not built for it right i mean i i cannot do this uh, sort of thing right? right and he started claiming that the two years which he spent in reliance with me was uh, he has actually undone his engineering so now he has to figure out what he wants to do and he felt that uh, he is good at uh, 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 good at uh, uh, i mean non engineering stuff right which where uh, you want to give a project you want to complete that and you look at in a suspect rather than the oh, uh, so so that is that is one of the reason and and uh, there was another friend of mine who did it from isb uh, and i worked with very closely with him in infosys and his reason was pretty simple see bharat you really like what you do <laughs> or yeah. you i can see it with uh, in your face that yeah you are really enjoying what you're doing right. and and i really don't right i mean i cannot see myself doing this for next uh, like some 10 years or 15 years and so on so i i i i need to figure out what what i am good at or what i would like to do for which i can do for quite some time right so uh, his reasoning was that uh, uh, from that perspective yeah so i mean different people have different, some people really uh, go for okay if i do an mba and i have a degree dual degree sort of thing might be uh, uh, might give me better hike or better path to to uh, whatever they are looking perspective it has always been that okay i do not want to get into uh, sort of uh, I, i am more a 10 sort of guy right either it is working it is not working no i have the gray area sort of things people talk about yeah so uh, in word one word it was just fantastic right i mean uh, uh, the kind of learn thing which we had had right uh, uh, which we are able to use in unit now uh, would not have been possible anywhere else right uh, the, the reason being that uh, the, the projects which i was in right uh, the kind of work which we were doing was so cutting edge so next generation right uh, uh, while you would see that okay cisco is coming out with various devices or various equipments but uh, there are huge amount of infosys engineers who actually have worked on those right to realize them so it, it is though it is uh, like uh, brand of cisco but internally uh, there is a lot of sweat and blood of uh, infosys uh, uh, engineers right so that actually uh, sitting here in bangalore you are getting uh, a view or getting to participate in something which is completely next generation at the time right and and not only you are working uh, uh, for them you are innovating so because uh, the 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 project i was in that was from lucent right and lucent at uh, uh, in in bay area did not had an in house engineering team so they were solely dependent upon us and we were doing everything in and out for them so though it the, the product which they were selling to the market was actually having a lucent brand but internally as i said right it the everything from end to end was being done by infosys engineer so that gives you a pretty huge amount of experience on building products right and uh, uh, then uh, uh, the uh, my, my my boss at the time was having discussions with nandan and so on and uh, we tried telling nandan as well that uh, we have so much of in house talent right so much of in house experience by now that we will be able to build a a, a make in india sort of product here and uh, for india as well as for the for the globe right so and since then we were part of this group as part of this group as i said right we created this uh, indigenous router platform it was end to end uh, hardware software test uh, everything was done uh, uh, within infosys and then we proved to bel that it is uh, uh, it is almost uh, performing same as cisco router in in quite a uh, parameter and exceeding it uh, or maybe beating it at a uh, lot more others right so that's when they realize that uh, yeah there there's something make in india product available and then they took it up sort of thing so uh, uh, multiple learnings have been happened in in uh, infosys technical learning has been amazing uh, i was one of the guys uh, uh, who actually participated in international standards from infosys uh, uh there are uh, that the the work that the discussion which we are having over internet uh, there is a standard organization called ietf uh, internet engineering task force 
which decide or which creates those standards on top of which this whole technology work uh, uh, i was uh, maybe the only guy who uh, got a chance to work on those standards to enforces right so uh, got real real good exposure in various things uh, what what we could uh, learn from in process uh so starting with uh, working with the uh, us customer exposing to the next generation technologies to uh, building a scalable reliable enterprise grade product uh, for uh, uh, as a make in india product right and and then coming out of with that experience and starting with yeah. so the, the journey has been fantastic I, i in fact met nandan nandan actually gave me an award i am sure he would not remember because <laughs> i was i'm too small for it but yeah i I tell that moment that uh, uh, we we had basically the award for something called uh, we had created a Linux user group called Infi Lug, uh, Infi Linux user group, uh, where we were helping out uh, people inside Infosys who wants to work on Linux because I and one of my other friend have been working on Linux from like 2000 onwards and and we were pretty decent at it at the time. uh and then they said that yeah this is something which is a very nice initiative and they recognized it and gave us some some award yeah so uh, let me quickly uh, uh, put a disclaimer uh, the front right so uh, a lot of people are talking about ai ml big data and so on but uh, there are a lot of hypes around it because people have suddenly become very excited that okay uh, uh, there are just too many uh, uh, possibilities or probabilities out there uh, uh, if we use ai right but uh, uh, one thing what we have realized after uh, working on this week for last 5 6 years and 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 working with customers closely and so on that uh, it needs to be applied to use cases right you cannot generalize it there are ai which does very very good at uh i mean uh, in general you would have seen right that you buy something in amazon right and it suddenly gives you five recommendations or people who bought this bought this or or right. or so on right it also is able to uh, i mean there are a lot of other sites which uses uh, uh, it for uh, uh, providing ads on uh, uh, retail things uh, you go to one site or you go to google and do some search and then suddenly you go to another site and see a ad for that right okay. so uh, uh i mean what 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 is really happening is that there is a use case there uh, which people are trying to solve right now this use case can be solved either use whichever technologies are available but ai really helps in predicting things right that there is x amount of chance or uh, this much of probability that if i show you this there is there is a chance that you will click on it and then buy it or or work with it so uh, why this ai part is working for certain use cases maybe in retail or maybe uh, and so on right or real estate and so on but uh, it it cannot be generalized and used for or extended right okay it is working here let me extend this to uh, another vertical or another uh, area right it, it doesn't happen it doesn't work right second thing is that making a ai driven thing working correctly is is very very time consuming people say okay i have this ai thing it will tomorrow it will give you results that is not possible right so the timelines part is again another thing uh, people say i have this which works uh, plug and play uh, sort of thing which is again uh, in, in in what i understand from is uh, very very difficult right, right. Uh, it may obviously it will give you some results but are the results really good enough for you to take action on are the results really uh, the right results right there has to be a uh, feedback loop which goes to your uh, uh, whole software uh, which start using those so as a as a human you have to tell okay this result is good this result is bad right at that learning has to go back to uh, uh, to the the software so that next time it will be able to give you better results right and it doesn't happen in day one right it, it does take time but i still feel that ai actually or data uh, big data part uh, right is actually pretty good and it will come into mainstream uh, in future uh, 
but it will be still used for specific use cases it cannot be generalized for anything and everything a lot of people are using it for a lot of things uh, but uh, i mean at present i still feel that uh, it is it is it cannot be used for anything and everything right so there will definitely be certain use cases where it will be very very used for example that voice recognition or retail and so on right they they are doing quite a fantastic job but there are other things which are having much man, man, many more variables right uh, where it is it is difficult to uh, to to make it work fully same thing is happening with us uh, we have uh, uh, been working on ai ops which is ai driven it operations uh, uh, to just give you a very uh, basic sense of uh, what we do so we monitor uh, uh, transactions right Uh, uh you would be making let's say nowadays nobody is actually opening their wallets right they are opening all their mobile phones so you make a transaction it hits your bank and then uh, it does something internally then uh, either credit or debit happens from your uh, uh, bank account right sure. so we monitor this transaction when it hits the bank so okay. bank has a, a pretty complex uh, infrastructure which uh, have this application hosted so for example upi you are working with it will have a upi app and that will have lot of logic uh, with different applications internally to uh, make that transaction successful right so what we do is we monitor this infrastructure we tell bank uh, our product tell bank that okay uh, x amount of transactions have come and uh, they have either successful or failed if they failed where they failed how much time they took and so on right uh, which which helps banks in figuring out where the failure points are correct them quickly so that people's transactions can go through and so on trying to bring in ai into mix of things uh, predicting when number of transactions may go high when there may be failures right helping customer uh, uh, become more proactive uh, and making sure that their customers transactions uh, always goes through in time getting data getting feedback so yeah it it's it's quite complex but yeah it will take time so let me give you one a couple of more lines so that that will help you understand so sure. basically what ai ai is artificial intelligence they call it or they use other word called machine learning it keeps track of uh, what you are doing so let's say if you are uh, working with a, a web application like amazon or flipkart and so on they they try to keep a track of what you have been doing when you log in when you log out or when you buy something what all do you look at right so they sort of create a baseline right then in last 3 months uh, danish had come to uh, at uh, let's say uh, danish always buy uh, uh, this uh, 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 perfume or this uh, book or this kind of books and so on right so they uh, they they create a uh, danish's activities are at then using those they start predicting and then they try to they have logics or uh, internally that machine has learned all this so they are able to put together a page to you that yes this is what uh, most likely you will see right uh, spotify does it very well they yeah. basically figure out what type of songs you have been listening at what time of the day and then they create that playlist for you or give you uh, uh, that okay this is what you would you generally listen so please Uh, this this is what you would want to listen like create a baseline sort of thing so this is this is one part of it second is that the prediction part of it uh, uh, you would have seen right that uh, people say that uh, 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 today's rents right uh, let's take a case of rents in bangalore uh, before covid environment uh, they have been increasing so they will take data for let's say last 5 years and then they will say that okay it has been going in this line it may be a slope of let's say 15% Right, that's fifteen degrees slow, and then they will figure out all the factors which might be impacting this rent, and then they will come up with a algebraic equation, right? Each uh, each uh, parameter which is impacting the outcome, which is rent, right? It could be location, it could be uh, people's uh, uh, salary, it could be uh, uh, let's say new metro coming in, and so on. and then they will predict at a specific point of time what the rent would be in a given year few years data and then try to extrapolate it uh, based on equation that is what uh, uh, ai or ml is all about it is it is you would have heard right x plus ay is equal to b sort of thing 
right, right. Exactly, exactly that. The only thing is that the number of uh, parameters which can be variable are just huge or unlimited sometimes. Yes. And then you give a give a feedback to this algebraic equation, yes. and then algebraic equation changes based on your feedback, whether it is good, bad, ugly, or very good sort of thing. So as, as I as I told you, right, that any outcome which you are looking for, for example, rent, right? Uh, one part of the equation is like x plus a y plus a one y a two y sort of thing, right? So if you have, uh, uh, I mean, if you have a very very simple one, for example, uh, rent actually varies because of location, right? So you will have only one uh, location. Based on location, you can decide what the rent could be, right? So the equation will be very simple, but if you have let's say thousand such variables, right, and those thousand variables may have thousand such uh, uh, constants or or changes, uh, it is different for you, different for me, different for everybody, right? So the amount of uh, amount of processing required to come up with that algebraic sort of equation, right? I mean, in in ML uh, terminology, it is called model. Right. So a, a model. So finally, what uh, AI or ML gives you is a model, which basically takes certain inputs and gives you an outcome. Right. So here, in the case of rent, the the inputs are like location, uh, your salary, or 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 thousand different things. And outcome would be to predict what could be the rent in this area. Right. Okay. So processing these uh, these uh, these uh, set of thing uh, thousand set of things and finding a relation in it and then coming out of with that al- uh, algebraic equation sort of thing is what takes huge huge amount of time because you have to process it you have to come at those thousand with thousand things right and you might have data for let's say one year which is every day's data 365 days data for every of this so you are processing of like gigabyte or petabyte of data Right, uh, and you need to come up with this model. Right, right. so it 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 does take uh, hours together to come out of with that model, finding that uh, correlation across right. these uh, thousand parameters. Uh, what are the inputs? Right, right. so uh, that is why it basically becomes very very uh, uh, process uh, consuming or time consuming, and uh, you really need good amount of uh, like. Uh, a pretty large servers right to to run this so uh, i mean most recently in last few years people have started using something called gpu rather than cpu to do this process and uh, the number of uh, equations or transactions it can do uh, within a second is just for all machine learning uh, uh, sort of requirement people have started using more of gpu rather than a normal cpu yeah So, uh, see, at the time where I joined uh, uh, Infosys, out of uh, before Infosys, I was actually a power electrical engineer, which was working on substations, uh, 440 volt, 11 kV, and 33 kV, and so on. Right? Uh, where I joined Infosys, I started learning software more closely. Right? And at, at the time, uh, uh, this I was very fascinated by this data communication part. And fortunately, I got to work on that. and i actually wanted to make my career on the networking side of things right and that's why i got involved with uh, the standards uh, and uh, i got involved with this uh, the router platform which we created and so on right uh, the things changed actually when we came out of infosys and started doing right uh, uh, because we wanted to create a product creating a networking sort of product what we had done in infosys was not feasible because it requires a huge amount of upfront uh, funding uh, right. because you are working with uh, something called hardware and uh, and and to a large extent that market was getting commoditized hmm. so uh, and uh, if you see anything which is coming in hardware you know where it comes from right hmm. and there the cost is so so cheap uh, you just can't comp- uh, compete with the, those those sort of costs right so we decided that we do not want to do those sort of uh, software right so we 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 started uh, talking to good amount of cios uh, it admins and so on because that is where our uh, strength comes from and then we realized that there is a good amount of gap 
in what kind of products they use today uh, to monitor their applications and infrastructure uh, and uh, that's what we try to fill right uh, uh, in fact when we started we started with our focus more on the security side of things cyber security side of things and uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we we felt that okay this is there is a good gap uh, what uh, uh, enterprises should have uh, which which they were not having at the time uh, but later realized that we are too early to the market that particular market actual products to solve that pain points of that that particular type so there are uh, n number of products which has come in and which solves only a specific pain point and nobody is really looking at the big picture and uh, and uh, enterprises do not have uh, a product which basically uh, able to give them a unified view of how this whole infrastructure is working together and and making sure that their applications are delivered seamlessly to their users right so that that's the pain point which we set out to solve and uh, this was around 2016 17 and when we started working on it very very soon we realized that uh, at the time this ai ml uh, talk had started right that time uh, so if you look at right at the time when we started it was more big data part of it so right. uh, so we also started with big data where we wanted to tell customers that you are doing a, uh, a normal monitoring you should do analytics driven monitoring right this is called it oa sort of thing they call it. So rather than just looking at fixing a problem, you also go beyond that problem, figure out why it is happening. Is it happening recurringly every Saturday? It happens. Do you solve that problem again, and again by restarting a server or a service? But are you really fixing that root cause, which is making it happen every Saturday? Or whether do you really know whether this problem happens every Saturday at at a specific point of time? So those sort of things where uh, people were clueless. So that's what we brought in called analytics driven monitoring. where it not only gives you the monitoring part piece it also gives you analytics on top of it what you need to fix to make sure that uh, you have better infrastructure monitoring today than yesterday right and uh, slowly when we started implementing this what we realized is that uh, this may not be enough going forward because people have started talking about ai and ml and so on and we were trying to find out specific use cases where we can go ahead and help our customers right and right. that's when uh, we started looking at more on the ai side of it so now we have couple of use cases which which really help customer uh, uh, deriving that output that that value out of those ai uh, uh, right now we are doing it for very very specific use case one use case we have is the user experience right, right. so uh, you know right that yes. uh, for last 4 5 years that digital payments and digital revolution has really uh come in in india and almost anybody and everybody has come onto the internet one way or the other right yes. and uh, uh because of the digital revolution one thing what i think you would also have noticed that it has become very very easy for customers or end users to move from one service to another service in seconds True. if you are not getting a cab from uber you will immediately book to ola if you are not getting a book in or a particular thing in amazon you will immediately move to flipkart everything is available in app right? right so if if you your application is not giving the best user experience to your customers your end customers right it is very very easy for you to lose a customer hmm. right every transaction which you are making on your app actually defines your user experience it's true even yeah. if you are not able to get something right or uh, or you are facing some challenge or some app doesn't work you click on it it doesn't give you anything it's purely because somewhere in their infrastructure uh, uh, in the operation something is not right right and that is where uh, we have uh, been telling our customers now that you have to have a view to your user experience because that is what should drive the whole thing what what you are trying to do internally everything should point to that user experience if your user experience is not good how much ever good your it operations or whatever you have you are bound to lose right and and that's what we are uh, we have brought in uh, uh, the ai model right now it is on statistical model and it is going towards ai now where we will not only show them what their current user experiences we will also predict what it is going to be 
uh, in near future and and the prediction that the other challenge with prediction is if it is you are predictive for last 5 minutes next 5 minutes you will do much better than you are predicting for next 5 years 5 hours okay so we do prediction for next half an hour or one hour where they get enough time to fix that prediction if at all prediction says that okay something is going to go wrong i i believe that uh, this uh, ar vr uh, could be one such thing but it has not picked up very well so far but uh, that also is uh, quite uh, quite an amazing or interesting technology which people are working on right uh, second thing which i think is hampering or is, is blocking our overall uh, progress here is what i believe is the security part of things right i think uh, rather than we really looking for next sort of technology uh, which will change the world i would think it is the security which we should uh, should really work on uh, uh, to make sure that uh, the the kind of uh, uh, people have got into internet the amount of people have got into internet and the amount of things they do today uh, if they are not secure or, or reliable or accessible and so on right uh, uh, it will become a big big challenge for everybody right so uh, rather than uh, uh, like betting on something uh, a new generation technology i would say that if if you really need to look at something very very seriously i would say that is security anything when, when you are or it is that anything you do right uh, it needs to be secured people should feel safe people are able to do transactions or or do whatever they they would want to do right with it uh, uh, the the challenge what is happening danish now is that uh, a four year old kid a five year old kid is getting into internet i mean there is no stopping it now right i mean uh, they can go other different places right how much secure that that is uh, there are different chat uh, applications there are video applications and so on So I I I feel that the security uh, is something which is going to be becoming much much more important. So I I think uh, I am very very uh, simple person. So most of it uh, uh, most of my close friends would definitely know. Uh, but there are a lot of people who I talk to interact with. Uh, there are there are almost lot of things like uh, which 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 I, i i end up doing so people know that i am a jack of all trades sort of guy right uh, i can play almost all sort of games uh, uh, at a decent level uh, where i can uh, i can play with uh, uh, like intermediary sort of thing table tennis badminton football uh, and so on right and uh, i am a uh, big uh, uh, book lover uh, i i can read anything which is available i mean i i don't feel like okay i need to restrict myself to only fiction or only business book uh, i have i have started pushing myself to read more business books rather than fictions but i am big on fictions i i i, I similarly i am a movie buff i am actually big on movies i i keep watching whatever comes to my hand right so yeah i i do a lot of uh, different things and uh, most of my close friends so no a lot so there are there are people uh, uh, who who believes if there is a table tennis table available somewhere bharat will be very close i i have kept my life very simple right uh, earlier i used to worry about i mean uh, codes used to come in my dream uh, that okay and morning i will be able to solve some of it right uh, but uh, what i have uh, started doing to myself is that make sure that i get a good 7 to 8 hours sleep uh, how much ever the problems are uh, whatever is happening i always say that okay there is another day available and i am not doing something where uh, somebody's life is at stake i am not i am not creating something which is Uh, into a rocket sort of thing where people are going in it or or or, or somebody's life dependent on it right that somebody will will die because something doesn't work so i am not into that so thankfully uh, uh, i am away from that so 
uh this is something which is very very important for me i i want to make sure that uh, i sleep 7 to 8 hours and and be ready for the next day yeah i i always feel that uh, uh, we are here for a purpose right i mean uh, and uh, i also always feel that once something has been decided after all due diligence whatever it is right and we decided that this needs doing or this needs to be done right i i would want to always go behind and make sure that it is done and and after completing that the the kind of impact it has and the kind of value it brings to anybody who is associated with that work right is what gives me the most satisfaction uh, uh, i i really i really feel that yeah uh, this is the purpose see i i am doing something right i mean in the whole uh, scheme of things what uh, maybe somebody who has created this whole thing has some purpose of me doing something and i have chosen to do this right so i i just want to make sure that i go ahead and do it the best possible way and make sure that it completes and brings in the the, the amount of value which we thought it will bring to to everybody every stakeholder who is part of that 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 really inspires me to do what i do actually i would not want to change anything as such uh, because i i felt i have done everything what i wanted to do at different part of time right uh, but uh, uh, i mean if if i have to tell something i would say enjoy more right uh, last 20 years uh, i have been working almost like uh, 13 14 hours a day right uh my day starts with uh, my cell phone or computer and then it ends with it uh, it's not that i have not enjoyed in between uh, but uh, i would say that yes i think life is only one right i mean uh, what you do at a specific age you may not be able to do after 10 years or 15 years and so on right? so i would definitely urge everybody who who is listening to me to to enjoy more i mean to enjoy that life which you have got uh, and do what you love uh, i mean it, it 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 is very strange right that uh, you understand this that do what you love you once you have already done with your uh, 30 40 50% of your life right so right. while i have done what i really love i i was i was part of a fantastic team whatever we did in in, in infosys or what we have been doing in june it's something really really great uh, but when i say enjoy more you do something other than that as well which, which you really like so i might have done 20 30% of that i am just looking at somebody doing 100% of that as well yeah actually uh, that before and after has not happened much uh, but what i believe is the family is the most important thing in life how much ever work you do how much ever fame you get how much ever money you make at the end of it it is those 10 15 20 30 people you have uh, in your life which we call family uh, uh, are the most important if if uh, if you are not taking care of them or if, if they are not happy or you are not happy then then this whole thing uh, whatever you have been living for last uh, whatever number of years right is is a complete waste Uh, is what i feel uh, so the learning has been that uh, uh, you must make sure or you go that extra mile to make sure that you, you keep that family together right uh, it's not that it has uh, not happened for me i have been away from my parents my family who is it still at ramnagar right uh, so what i feel that there is a gap that that gap actually everybody should make sure that the gap doesn't happen or doesn't become bigger obviously there will be a gap because you are living at two different places but at the heart at the mind uh, uh, you should be together and you should make sure that uh, that you take care of that uh, part uh, religiously diligently and 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 do a lot of efforts on that people should forgive the problem actually in the today's world is we take everything to the heart and uh, we start believing that uh, assumptions and presumptions are uh, uh, a big factor to that 
uh i mean there are a lot of uh, if, if you go to internet right there are a lot of memes or, or things people do right and uh, which very clearly shows that people are not looking it from the other person's point of view and a lot of time you make assumptions ki boss the person actually wants bad for you right right but that is not the case because that person actually is not even thinking uh, in that direction or doing anything in that direction right so i i believe that uh, people should forgive uh, much faster much easier and that will i, I believe that will make the world much much better place than what we are i have not got many uh, directly i mean people do talk about it uh, yesterday only by uh, uh, one of my colleague mentioned that we are trying to hire somebody uh who is like having uh, like uh, skills like bharat who can do two things uh, two different things and my ceo responded saying that uh, i think you have underestimated bharat it is only two of the 100 skills he has i, I keep getting uh, things like that but yeah somebody has not directly come to me yeah this, this is why people do tell me that we should clone you yeah so there those kind of uh, things i have got yeah the first one will be bill gates right uh, i would definitely want to meet him uh, if at all possible I, i really admire him for what he did with microsoft right and uh, second would be narendra modi i do admire him for what he has been doing for india third could be subhash chandra bose i i uh, because he was the person uh, i mean people talk about that uh, really brought independence to india so i i i, I always wanted to know what, what really uh, motivate him or what really uh, what were the reasons why he went into that azad hind force and so on see advice wise uh, i would uh, suggest to basically be honest uh, what your capabilities or skill sets are what what you should know what you can do sort of thing and then once you know that you must make sure that you increase that bar second thing is uh, <laughs> i mean again this is something which you see in lot of pictures right uh, there is somebody who is at the top who is very successful and there are people on the other side who is saying yeah i can do this but then on the other side of that person it's it's like a hill where that person has gone barefoot and his feet are Uh, uh like bleeding and nobody sees that right almost anybody and everybody puts in uh, to become successful so there is no shortcut to that uh, uh, sachin tendulkar or a virat kohli could not have been there because of just talent right look at if he had to play for 20 years he actually has that regimen almost on day in day out uh, the, the same thing is that without hard work you cannot really uh call yourself a successful person right so so hard work is something which which is uh, paramount uh, yeah. from from that perspective and actually uh, one of my friend very close friend again uh, has termed that uh, bharat does not do the hard work he does smart work so i would think that uh, uh, you should actually look at uh, changing it to smart work how do you do smart work uh, from that perspective and and make sure that uh, you achieve what you set out and yeah. the third thing i would say is that you should have a never say die sort of attitude uh, that uh, you start something and then leave it in the middle and not complete it because of various reasons right so right. so i always believe that uh, you have already done enough due diligence before starting something and make sure that uh, you take it to the completion with the right amount of values and things comes coming out of it i am on linkedin people can definitely reach out to me through that uh, this is another thing which i try doing i try to respond to uh, anybody and everybody who tries to connect with me and need some help on anything right i i will definitely try to help as much as i can given the time schedule i have or or the person who is asking a specific question where i have done something in life uh, i can add value uh, i just do not want to generally give gyan sitting somewhere if i if i really done something i will definitely be able to help as i said right we all are here for a purpose uh, i would like to make sure that i fulfill that purpose whatever it is uh, uh, in store that 2021 
has for us as as a company as a family or as a person right uh, i would definitely want to fulfill that uh, and uh, uh, from the so currently uh, the main focus has been on the company side of things and uh, we want to make sure that we start scaling vunet now we are at a very sweet spot and there's a huge huge amount of market opportunities we have and uh, we are looking at scaling it into a multi million dollar business uh, in in next uh, next year